This is a demonstration of a custom GAT Bluetooth client running on a Pi Pico W. This client is, is implemented to behave kind of like some of the more common Bluetooth debugging applications, in particular the, the light blue app. So what this client does when it boots up is it looks for a GAP advertisement from a server which indicates that that server contains a service with a known UUID, a UUID that's known to the custom client. When it finds such a server, it will connect to it and then discover all of the characteristics contained within that service and display them over here in this terminal window. Um, so it'll display all of the characteristics and it'll display their associated access properties and other configurations. And then it implements a user interface that allows for the user to do things like issue reads from the custom server or issue write commands to the characteristics of that server. So hardware wise, what we're looking at is two Pi Pico Ws. The one that's on the breadboard here is, uh, includes the custom GAT server implementation. This server includes a single custom service that, that has six associated characteristics. Um, this Pico W is also driving a VGA display, which is showing us a visual representation of the characteristics in that service. You can see that there are six of them, one of which is just counting. Another one is being uh, used to set the frequency of a synthesizer that is running on this, this RP2040. Um, two for, for holding strings, for sending commands from uh, server to client and from client to server. Another one that's used to turn the onboard LED on and off. And then a final characteristic that is used to set the color of this circle. So the, the other RP2040 here, the one that's on the table, is, has the client running on it. This is currently powered off. And I'm about to power it on. And when we do, this will look for a gap advertisement from this RP2040. And when it finds it, it will connect to it. And in this terminal window over here, we should see a visual representation, or we should see a printout here of all of these characteristics, their associated access properties and their associated values. Um, so let me just power this on. We'll look at this. Um, So you can see that it has, this client has connected to this server and it's discovered one, two, three, four, five, six characteristics. And it's printing out the value of these characteristics. These aren't updating in real time. I'll show in a moment how we can make that happen. It's showing the notification status of each characteristics. That is to say whether or not we have notifications turned on or off for the associated characteristic. It's showing us the access permissions for that characteristic, read, notify, uh, some of them are write without response. It's showing us the user description and a characteristic ID, which we'll use in this user interface to interact with it. It's worth mentioning that this client has no prior knowledge of any of these characteristics. The only prior knowledge that it has is the name of the service running on this server that contains these characteristics. Once it connects, it issues a series of commands in order to learn all of these characteristics and their associated properties and access permissions. Um, so through this user interface, we can do a few things. So for instance, you can see that this counter on the server is continuing to increment, but that we have not gotten the updated value over here on the client. If I wanted to get the updated value, one way that I could do that is as indicated here in the user display, I could type zero to refresh all of the characteristic values. And if I do, you can see all of the characteristic values update. So this updated to 724, which was a, the most recent value of this. Um, or if I want to see these, if I want for this to update each time that the server updates its value, I could turn on notifications for the associated characteristic. And the way that I do that is by typing a, the capital version of the characteristic ID. So the characteristic ID for this characteristic is lowercase a. If I type capital A, it will turn on notifications and you can see that this now updates every time that the server changes its value. I'm just gonna turn that off for a second. I can also use this interface to, uh, to 
issue write commands to these characteristics. So for instance, if I want to do a write to characteristic D here, I could type a D. It's going to prompt me for a string. I'll write hello world. And when I do so, we see that the server has received that string, hello world, and printed it to the VGA display. And we can also see that characteristic D here now has a value that is hello world. This other um, serial interface over here is giving me a serial input to the server with which I can write to uh, characteristic C here. You can see the characteristic C doesn't have any write access permissions. It can only be read but I can write to it here on the server. So I could write um, greetings. And when I do, you can see that greetings appears here on the server, but we don't yet see it on the client because we haven't refreshed these characteristic values. If I'd like to refresh them, I could type a zero and you can see that greetings appears here. I can also subscribe to notifications on that particular characteristic by typing a capital C and then every time this changes, I could write hello. You could see that the associated char characteristic value changes here on the, uh, on the client as well. I can also incidentally turn on notifications for multiple characteristics. So let me turn it on for both the counter and characteristic C here. So now you can see that the counter is changing. And if I write hello again, you can see that characteristic C here also changes. This notification status too, by the way, it learns the notification status of each of these characteristics when it first connects to the server. And so if I were to power off the client and then power it back on so that it reconnects to the server, we should see it uh, correctly recover all of these settings. So let me just do that. I'm gonna turn off the client and then I'll turn it back on. And when I do, you can see that it has reconnected to the server and it has maintained all of our settings. Um, not because those settings were stored locally any place in any kind of non-volatile memory, but instead because it queried the server for those settings and, and recovered them. Um, so let me just turn those notifications off for both of those. Um, and I can, of course, do writes to all of the other, the, oh, it's worth mentioning, I suppose, if I try to issue a write to a characteristic for which I do not have write permission, so for instance, characteristic A here, you can see that we only have read and notify permissions, we do not have write permissions. If I try to do a write to characteristic A, you can see that it flashes a message to me which says no write permission for that characteristic. Similarly, if I try to subscribe to notifications for a characteristic that does not have notifications enabled, I'll get a similar message. So let's see, I'll try to subscribe to characteristic E, and you can see that there's no notification permission for that characteristic. But of course, I, I can write to the other characteristics for which I have such permissions. Um, so for instance, let me issue a write to characteristic F. I'll write an eight there, which should color, change the color of the, uh, the circle here to a red. Um, I could write to characteristic E and turn the onboard LED on. You can see that this LED just turned on and the LED status has toggled to on. Um, or I could change the frequency of the synthesizer by writing to characteristic B here. So let me write to characteristic B I'll write it to 200 hertz, and if I unmute this, we should be able to hear the synthesizer. Mm -hmm. 